Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. I'm back out here with my friend Adam from Hometown Acres, and today we're going to do a comparison of different ways to split wood. Personally, aside from having a splitting mall that I use a few t times a year, I've got a homeowner grade log splitter and I've got a skid steer mount log splitter. Adam has two different types of wood splitters that I've never used and we're going to run those today and then we're going to kind of give our thoughts about a situation where this might be the right tool for you if you want to step up from your homeowner grade splitter or why maybe it not might not be and maybe one of the other options is better. Yeah. So you want to tell them real quick what the two machines you have are? Yeah, so this first one here right behind us is an Easton Made Axis. It is a commercial grade log splitter. Um, it's not your traditional push type log splitter that you push it through a wedge. The wedge is actually on the hydraulic cylinder itself and you work on this work table, which is nice and waist height. This is not a high production machine. This is more for splitting perfect pretty firewood that you would bundle and sell to people who uh, you know go use for for going camping and stuff like I got an example right here this would be you know you've got very good precision control to split perfect firewood uh, so it's a little bit slower but you have much more control over where the knife is going to be on the log uh, so that's the first machine we'll take a look at the second one is more of a production machine it is a firewood processor it takes whole logs uh, cuts them, splits them, and runs them up into a conveyor and puts them into whatever package, IBC totes, dump trailer, or whatever that you're using to store your firewood in. So what we're going to do today is we're going to run them both, and then we'll sit down and give you my review as someone who's used them once, and Adam's review as someone who has a lot more experience on it. So Let's do it. Should be a lot of fun. Number one thing I'm automatically a big fan of is the log lift. It's my biggest nuisance with firewood is everything we get's big and I don't like picking it up. I want to test the theory out. I don't know if this is real or not, but hey, Doug! That's like magic! Who the Where heck's hollering for me? Where did you come from? I usually hide in the bushes. If you guys watch Hometown Acres, you know neighbor Doug shows up anytime you need him.
get caught there. Hold up. Hold that down just a little so I can get caught there. This is three point mount PTO driven. You're supposed to be able to pick it up and carry it with your tractor, but this unit is actually too heavy for the tractor he's got. It's it's a 35 horsepower tractor and it's supposed to pick up about 1600 to 1700 pounds on the three point. But this is designed for a, a larger tractor than what I have. The PTO power requirement is only, I think, 25 horsepower at the PTO, which my tractor has that. I just don't have the lifting capacity to move it around. Now, luckily, you don't have to carry it to run it, so. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. That'll be a much better one. Yeah. It's got a little bit of twist to it, but it should still be all right. So, Adam, this right here is a log deck that is an accessory to the processor, is that correct? Yeah, and if you look, it's got hydraulic hoses that run from the log deck to the machine. And what that runs is this infeed roller. So that will work in them with the infeed belt. And it'll spin at the same speed. So you've got a contact point here and a contact point here to feed that log. So there's a hydraulic motor on the main unit that runs this. So this is a completely manual model. Uh, there's no hydraulic levers down here that run any of the controls. You basically just have this arm here that controls the infeed and the saw and the splitter. So the infeed, you push it forward. So as it's coming through, the lock will advance in this log stop here. When it hits that, you stop pushing it forward and pull the control arm down to bring the saw down. And I'll show you that real quick. So we're going to advance. Hit the lock stop. Saw will start. You what I was really impressed with both of those machines and I I've seen them both in multiple videos and I didn't really get it until I was the one doing it right. so besides the t those two machines that we just looked at down here that belong to Adam I have the inverted skid steer log splitter and it fits a very unique purpose and what I'm realizing is that both of your machines are also for a specific purpose so yeah i don't i don't think that there is a perfect log splitter for everybody or that's perfect for every situation there's different products out there for different people and and different operations and i think 
there's a number of operations that it makes sense to have two different things because you can do multiple different businesses. Like uh, we were talking about the East of Maine Axis is good if you're selling bundled firewood or camp firewood, um, whereas the other one is great for churning out wood that you can sell for people to heat with homes. Uh, so it's, it's good to have more than one machine and a little bit of diversity. And I would say if you ask the question like, what is the perfect firewood splitting tool? There's a percentage of people that the perfect tool is the splitting mole. Yep. They, they enjoy doing it. It's good exercise. It heats you twice and you only, you uh, recover your, your sunk cost in the first cord, or the first rick. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe you only do just a little bit. Yeah. And that's fine. And then up from that, you go to a homeowner splitter, which the first time you get a homeowner hydraulic log splitter, like, wow, this is so much better, but that is up to a certain amount of firewood in a certain situation where that works great. And if you're only splitting for yourself and you split a little throughout the year, you can, it, it'll do the job just fine for yeah. one family. But if you're wanting to do more or you need to do more, then you start running into a lot of different options. And I think that's where it gets a little bit confusing. Now, I'll talk first about the one I have at home, the other option, because there seems like everyone misunderstands the usage of that attachment. And it's for a very small niche of people. First, you already own a skid loader. Second, you handle really large rounds. And in my operation, it would never be the only way you split firewood if you're in a firewood business or any situation, because you have to drive over to each piece and orient yourself to it and it's cumbersome and it's it's kind of slow but i i don't know if there's anything better for if you have gigantic rounds 36 40 inches you can sit in the comfort of a heated cab and split that up i mean and you never pick anything up even with the east made axis with the log lift a 30 or 40 inch round you're still going to be struggling to manhandle it underneath the splitting wedge, trying to slide it on the table and all that. And then once you get it busted in half, now you've got to move one half out of the way to split the other one. Yeah, I could definitely see a skid steer mounted splitter to be helpful there. And if you think about an operation, kind of like what you have, but let's say you went just a little bit further and you're doing full time and maybe even you have one employee and you're processing a lot of wood. You say, your understanding is everything that's too big to mess with gets pushed over there and one day we come through and we split that all from inside the log splitter and the same thing is true about the the ones that go on the end of a mini excavator and those are more convenient but everyone's like well that's not as good as the one on a mini excavator yeah but i don't have a mini excavator <laughs> yeah. so those are great for sitting in your comfort and dealing with the big rounds but that you can't do everything with that so that's an accompaniment to another way to split wood and for me it replaces the splitting mole for things that are big so then you mentioned with the easton made the axis that's an awesome tool i was so impressed with that that i can split that one round in about 30 seconds or less into like 15 pieces grab them all under one arm <laughs> and i've got they're all perfect, uniform size. You're able to set it directly underneath that knife, and it just gives you such precision control uh, and allows you to do that. You can't do that with any other type of splitter. The, the vertical, I'm not going to say the Easton Made Axis is the only one, but those vertical style splitters with the table are the only ones you can really kind of do that checkered pattern, flip it, and, and make little two by two inch sticks. And I don't sell bundle firewood. I don't make bundle firewood, really. And I, I was like, well, what's how practical is that for me? But man, the biggest inconvenience I have splitting firewood is everything I have is big. And even a 20-inch piece, you split it. And now you're like, each of these needs to be split three more times. And where do I put them? And all that's gone. Mm -hmm. And you kind of mentioned it as it's not the fastest way to process bulk firewood in larger pieces. Uh, t it's dramatically faster than a homeowner splitter to bust yeah. one round up into any size pieces. It is absolutely faster than a standard Home Depot log splitter. 
Um, the other thing with that precision that you have that's really nice on it is if you have, like you said, big rounds that are 30, 40 inches, whatever, inevitably you're going to find some that have knots in them. And so you can take that and work around that knot. And so it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. You can take some ugly wood and get the 90% of, of that round that's nice and pretty and uh, process it into, uh, into good firewood. And then that one that has the big knot in it, just take that and throw it to the side or whatever. Yep. And then I, the one that I don't have experience with, talking about five different splitting options, I've never used a commercial grade horizontal log splitter with like a six-way wedge that moves up and down. Have you ever got to use something like that? I have. So before we had the Axis, we had an Easton Made 1222, and they are they are your production machine. They're going to make you a lot of firewood very quickly, uh, but you're going to have to be pulling a lot of material back. So if you send a big round through, you're going to have to pull all that stuff back and run it through again, um, and it also creates a lot more waste and kindling and, and mulch type pieces uh just because you're running it through a six-way knife and it's just sh uh, shredding the wood as it's pushing it through so you'll get nice firewood out of it and it'll make it quickly but there's a lot more waste that comes off as well one interesting note on those products is we're looking at these other options as being this is good for this and this is good for that if you could only have one thing does it seem like that might be the way to go i think so i think i would sacrifice the little bit of uh production for the precision at least in what I do, that that would be the one. If I had to pick one machine, that'd be what I'd go. With. It would be the the horizontal commercial splitter, like the other axis you, the Easton made you had. No, or the I'd, axis. I'd go with the axis. I think over the twelve twenty two. So I've ran several things. I've never ran one of those types like I was talking about, but I I think that axis seems like it's hard to beat. Yeah, out out of all the splitters that I've run, that's probably been my favorite. Okay, so if it's so great, why do you have a firewood processor speed production um, I can make I mean you saw we split two or three logs in what like five minutes and we had almost a full IBC tote which is a third of a cord in five minutes yeah and I asked that question hoping for an answer that's basically what you gave in that that is it's a jet engine it, it splits and i mean you can produce a lot of fire when it's a perfect it would be the perfect tool except that it requires you to have the exact right size of logs it has a limit on the size and you also have to have you know that room to set up that table and then you've got to load the back of it and so you have to have the equipment to handle that yeah you've got to have the material handling equipment and you've got to have the log supply of nice straight skinny firewood poles because the max log diameter you can run through that is 14 inches uh, so you really can't go much over that so really it comes down to what are you selling are you selling camp firewood wood for heat uh, what kind of business are you running but also what matters is what does your supply look like? Are you getting tree service wood? Are you cutting your own wood from back in, in on your own property? Uh, are you having log trucks deliver you firewood? Uh, that's a big influence over what equipment will be best for you. That's absolutely what I was thinking about because if, if you brought that to me tomorrow, I wouldn't be able to use it. I don't have anything, I don't have any logs on my property that are the right size and but I can see I have a source. I know how I can get some. And you could start sourcing logs the way you do. Um, yeah. Because you, you buy truckloads of logs. Correct. Yeah. And uh, the one thing, back to kind of how we were talking about having multiple different pieces of equipment, kind of how I use those together is if I get a, a 13 or 14 inch log that's at the max diameter of what will run through the processor, when I run those logs through the six-way wedge, it'll give me pieces that are larger than what I'm looking for, that ideal size. And so then I'll use the Eastimate axis as a re-splitter. I'll take those bigger splits off the, the processor and go and split them in half one more time with the axis to give me, you know, the good campfire size wood pieces. So I guess if we want to be covering all the bases in this, have you ever ran one of those excavator splitters? I have not. It seems like... That would be a handy option, but it's still, it's not replacing either of your two machines out there. That's more for dealing with those big ones, I think. Yeah, and I can still do them with the axis. It's just not as comfortable, you know, trying to manhandle a, a 
two or 300 pound round than it is sitting in an air conditioned or heated cab on a day like today. And then the, uh, then the other option is the like tractor mount three point splitters. And most of those, I don't like the idea of having a splitter on the back of my tractor because I carry logs with the tractor. Mm -hmm. And those are almost more replacement for your homeowner splitter. So. Right. But hey, I think I love the setup you've got. I think if you, you do a lot of firewood already, but if you wanted to go in full time, you've got a nice equipment set up for it. The excavator is perfect. Yeah. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to try some of this out. I always love having people over to take a look at the equipment. And the, and then obviously the last thing is cost. That's a pretty dramatic price increase to go up to the Easton made. And then the, the processor is going to be even more than that. So you always have to factor that in. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could put a link down in the description to current pricing. Uh, but I think right now, probably the Easton made axis is around somewhere between 11 and $13,000. And the Yapa firewood processor is somewhere 20 ish thousand dollars. Um, so it's definitely an investment. It's it's not something for the homeowner. Uh, it's somebody that wants to probably burn wood for themselves, but also, you know, you're definitely thinking about selling wood. It's it's not a question of if, but how much. And I can tell you, if you're making decisions about is, do you want to be in the firewood business? The best resource I can recommend to you is watch this guy's videos. <laughs> Hometown Acres is the YouTube channel. He makes a lot of videos about splitting firewood, but he also talks a lot about the economics of how much did he spend on chains and fuel and Depre upkeep on the, the machines, depreciation. He goes very detailed on the math and can help you make some of those decisions. The, the biggest problem I see with a lot of people who do firewood is they, they don't charge enough for the product that they're selling. They don't understand their costs and they don't understand that they're charging less than what it costs them to make it. And so we try to help people understand that and charge more for the product that they're selling. Yep. So make sure you check out Adam's channel. I appreciate you watching this video. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos and we'll see you next time.